We had like so many events now in the St. Louis Chess Club that I think it's at least deserve a little bit of spot. In, uh, in my lectures probably deserves way more. Uh, we had one lecture just specifically for the Grandmaster and IM tournament. Could have done maybe a bit more, but we just had one, I believe it was like about an hour and a half on the two tournaments. Thanksgiving tournament just on Thanksgiving weekend, surprisingly enough. It actually had a, you know, one strong Grandmaster, Corrales, like, and several decent international, decent, decent plus international masters, and one, wo one woman Grandmaster, one woman international master. It was actually a very, very interesting event. And surprisingly enough, the huge big favorite didn't win the tournament due to a loss to woman Grandmaster Anna Sharevitz in the third round, if I'm not mistaken. We will definitely see this game. Not every day we see a 2250, 2300 player beating strong Grandmaster, 2600 Grandmaster, and well, it seemed like it was quite fair and square. And we had some, well, upsets, brilliances, and actually I like to start with a game two of, from two of our regular club members, Jonathan Schwartz, right? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Schwartz, right. Uh, it's, it's not from like a uh, space ball. You, have you seen the movie? Yeah. All right. May the Schwartz be with you? <laughs> Taken from there? No. All right. So, well, you know, if, if from this video people will watch space ball, we already did our job. <laughs> so, respect for the movie. And, and uh, Spencer Feingold, well, apparently son of Grandmaster Feingold, that was the GM Res, and a decent player by himself, you know, master, 2200. So we have 300, 300 350 points, point difference. So it was a really, really interesting game. Second time I'm seeing it today. Let's see if we have any deeper insights. All right, so Jonathan was right. D4, that's a decent move. Knight F6, C4, E6. G3, playing like Kramnik. Catalan, and basically, what's the idea of G3? Well, it's the bishop on the one leg, discourage like Right, but what's the difference, for example, if you want to enter the Catalan, which exactly you want, right? The playing against Queen's, Queen's Gambit, right? But instead of having our normal, normal structure, let's say this is super duper normal Queen's Gambit structure, we are going to have <coughs> Knight f3, d5, and then g3, okay? An opening, okay, pretty much everyone played it. I mean, Anand won the World Championship in 2010 against Topalov mainly because of wins in games number two and four against Topalov. In this opening, Kramnik, main thing, uh, Carlsen, everyone playing this, Carlsen, everyone. But what's the difference between g3 and knight f3? Exactly, exactly. If knight f3, d5 is of course not the only move. I mean, c5, many other systems, but b6 is what white wants to prevent in the move order that Jonathan chose, right? Exactly, because now g3, okay, many of the versions, bishop a6, bishop b7, many, many, many of the versions of queen's Indian are out there. So g3 making effort to at least avoid them. It's a decent possibility. D5, knight F3. So all in all, we are back to the Catalan. Many other lines are possible. Bishop B4 check immediately. Queen A4 check is a possibility. And now, okay, if we if we were to go to the very classical line, we will see Bishop E7, castle, castle, Queen C2, with about endless amount of endless amount of games, uh, including. In the match, Kasparov, Karpov, Karpov, Kasparov, you name it, you say it. Carlos and Aronian in the candidates was like this in March this year. Really, really, really everyone. A huge opening. But Bishop B4. Okay, this is basically similar versions to what Topalov has played against Anand in their match. Bishop D2, A5. Castle. 
B5. I wonder, I wonder if C6 is a bit more accurate right away or, or something like that. May, maybe C6 because, okay, there, there was a very, I mean, this just immediately might be inaccurate, right? Yeah, but 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 let's say okay. What what is other than me and Jonathan? Because we have I've seen the game and Jonathan apparently played it. <laughs> okay, which which is most logical move here for for White? Yes. Knight e5. Okay, knight e5 is reasonable. What should Black play after knight e5? Logical move for black. Let us play it on the board. Huh? Rook is... Oh, the, the rook is under attack. The rook is 7 is okay. I, I like more knight d5. I think I like to block the diagonal. We will speak in a second. Um, because after rook a7, I think white has, a dec white has at least decent possibility. Which move here? Okay, the pawn will take it. No, I mean, this is actually very basically principle move. I mean, just positionally, in, in those types of idea when a pawn is taken on c4 and b5 being played, uh, there is one automatically move. If you were playing bullet on ICC, you would put it pre-move. <laughs> so what is our mysterious pre-move? I'll give you all one last shot. Hmm, I want to, I, I, I want, I want to attack the b5 pawn, but how would I want to attack it? I want to attack it with a pawn, a4. It's so, so, so basic, this move, right? Whenever we have those pawns, we want to attack the base of the pawn chain. So this a4 move is a very basic move. Now, why did I say that after this move I, I prefer not to play rook a7? Because now if I play this move, it might not be so easy for you to defend everything. I mean, maybe you can take on d2 because I cannot take with the queen because of, with the knight because of queen takes d4. So I'll have to take with the queen and I tiny bit prefer less. d4, b4. This may be not so bad because the knight here is, is ugly. But, why, why, why did I suggest knight d5, Julian? Because after a4, I think at least we might have, we might have this idea, right? And we have to be very careful. If take, we have to take here first. To be super duper careful because it's incredible. There are just two pins here. <laughs> Impossible to take with the pawn. Possible with the knight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. I know what you want. Yeah, of course. I can, let's say, go here, maybe. Bishop e3. Bishop e3? Yeah. Okay, th this is normal. Th this is normal. I mean, I mean, what white, of course, has the normal compensation here. We spoke a bit about those ideas. Many, many times, white is not going after the pawn. I mean, white is just building a powerful center and then thinking about some attack. So I just remember in my head, uh, very decent blitz game, Carlsen against Morozevich. I don't remember which year, but Carlsen was white, like went all crazy, actually lost the game. Like, but amazingly enough, this move is wrong because A4 is very strong. And now, let's see if someone, once again, other than me and Jonathan, will be able to just a really smart idea here. A very, quite surprising this continuation, but it's really, really very strong. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, dude. Like, <laughs> seriously. Like, 
no, okay, you take on b5, I'm not going to take on b5 and allow you to take the bishop, the piece. I'll take on d2. Like, <laughs> seriously? So take on b5, I take on d2, what then? No, but this is the thing. That's the big, big, big idea here. Take is correct. Uh, of course, impossible to take here, just losing a piece. Thank you very much. But after take here, this is a super duper cool move. Like, this, this really, really looks like a cool move. Because opening the entire diagonal, when White is playing Catalan, this is his dream bishop. Playing with this bishop, having it open, putting pressure. And now black cannot recapture because of the rook. And if he captures on d4, I guess this is just really powerful, right? Yeah. I mean, some, something like that looks like very, very strong for white. Equal material, c4 is going to fall. And no, this is a big no-no for black. So now Jonathan missed this. But not again. No, it, it's so surprising the capture back with the knight. Th this is the surprising move. Capture back and opening the diagonal. Because 90 whatever out of 100 we're going to capture. And capture and develop the knight. But this is not incredibly impressive. I mean, okay, you know. Black is going to play this. So, we had our game. Knight C3. Knight C3 castle. And here, interesting move by Jonathan. I mean, if impossible to take the pawn already, because after take, well, take, pawn. I mean, OK, if one more move is being played, for example, if black has one more move, bishop B7 strategically is winning. He's a pawn up, he has the light squares, I mean, I mean, here I'm not certain what white is going what white has for a pawn down. Ninety five, we always have our ninety five or not clear. So impossible to take. Playing maybe slow like this move and building the center is logical. Just we have our central pawns and well pawn down. But quite interesting move by By Mr. Jonathan. Okay, so what is White's idea here? Oh, threat. Immediate threat in this position. What is it? So what is white's threat here? Well, he wants to take. I mean, we have to think about captures all the time, right? All the time. Let's say black just plays a random move. Take. And this is very smart. And it's not just that black won the, white won the pawn, but he's winning the imported pawn. So this pawn will remain very, very weak after it. All right. Defend. I 
I actually thought that this might be a reasonably cool move. And now, okay, can white capture, capture, and capture? First thing, we always have to look at capture. Doesn't matter if you're 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, master, grandmaster, world champion. You have to look at the captures first. So is it possible to capture here or not? Any ideas? No? She's got one. What, what? She's got one. Okay, what's your idea? Okay. See, take, the pawn will take, and then the knight will take. How will we play with black? Okay, that's a start. Okay, that's excellent. That's very good. Now what with black? Let's do it slowly. Excellent. Um, that's, that's actually the best line, Isabel. That's excellent. But let's continue. So, so far you are looking at forcing moves, right? Because we know, right, when we are, when I'm bothering you in the Sunday Kids class, that we have to look at captures, 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 because that's how we win material. It's correct if you are a young girl starting to play chess or an old man like me that has played too much chess. <laughs> but <laughs> after king take bishop. What now? Now is the big move. Let's see. Do we see a good move here? Well, you've been very impressive. Up until now, it's best line. Captures, captures. Do we have any... What are our forcing moves? Remember, Isabel? Forcing moves. Checks. Checks. Do you have any important check here? Maybe, right? Let's see. This is a check, right? This is not a check. This is what you call a mouse slip and then take back, take back, take back one note, they give me take back and all the big stories. Oh, how come you didn't give me take back? But this move. And what is happening here? Was this our idea? Yeah. But that's that's immediately. I mean there's nothing that can be done, right? Captures, captures, capture, check. Winning the knight on b5. So, I like bishop b7 a bit more than queen b6. But okay, queen b6. Rook d1. Maybe mm, doesn't have to be played, according also to Jonathan. And e4. Okay, so Jonathan is serious here. He's no joking. Well, what, what, what does he want to play? I mean, when white has the center this way, I mean, okay, we want, we want to do something with our pawns, but what? Yes, Maestro? Huh? E5. And then? E5 and IG5. Good. So what would you play with black, dude? I think that's a good move. I really like this idea, yeah. I mean, uh, I ju just, ju this was just, just very logical play. You know, interesting, I was, I, I said, today I was looking at this game already with Jonathan and it's really a super cool game, very interesting. One, it won the brilliancy prize, so just honor for the tournament we need to show it. Plus it was a decent one. And we were looking at it, no computers, nothing. Now I'm looking with computers just to see, and we, we didn't embarrass each other. I mean, at least uh, Houdini 3 thinks that h6 is best move. 
Yeah, not bad. I mean, but just lo- Houdini 3 and Julian. <laughs> and I should have said Julian and Houdini 3 in that order. Right, but very good. But, but the way of thinking was very good. So we have 8, 6. E5. Well, we don't have 8, 6, sorry. We have 8, 6 in our head. Knight BD7. By the way, this is, this is equally in Houdini's world a move. Like he said, I would play six. I this g six, I don't know, makes me feel uncomfortable, right? Like this, this. Okay, you know, this checkmate. G six. All righty. And now Jonathan wasting no time. Man with a mission. <laughs> well, uh, the mission was to checkmate black, and it actually worked. <laughs> Queen e four. Okay, h6 looks something, but it's actually horrible. How about here something? Well, why, why, why h6 is horrible? Let's see. Someone. Any thoughts how I should play? sequence in my head, but F's <coughs> knight takes f7. Just knight takes f7. Okay, and if I take? Yeah, but you have something maybe better. Very, very similar to what you want to achieve, but just better, you know? I, I always say, we have two steps, two things, two factors to play good combination. One, the idea. Yeah, your idea is out there. Basically, you want to eliminate the f7 pawn and then go after the king. But actually, the way to eliminate the f7 pawn goes through e6. This is the move. Because now you are ki- kind of forcing the removal. Actually, actually, I was thinking in the beginning, bla- bla- of course, black cannot take. I mean, this, 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 this. This ugh. I mean, I, 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 m- maybe I can, maybe I can check and take when e six again, rook f seven. But I mean, this comes like kids don't try this at home. That's like really <laughs> like <laughs> no. This this is a bit. But actually, this move is not entirely clear. No, okay, probably uh, probably will play like knight f four. It has to. I mean, I don't know if this is okay for black, then I doubt it. But yeah, knight f4 probably. But this, but this is this is the idea, the way to f7 g6. Many times passing to e6. All right. King g7 was played. Queen h6. Okay, checkmate is not bad. H5. Yeah, maybe maybe rook h8. I don't know. But okay. Now came a, at the beginning. I remember I said Jonathan, oh, this no. Then I understood that his idea is way smarter than what I understand. So well, that's why that's why we are looking at this game. No, seriously, this this is heavy stuff.
I mean, it's very clear that we want to go like something, I don't know, here, 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 some, some things like that. But Jonathan very, very correctly pointed out repeatedly those ideas. Just retreating with the bishop, although I had a tiny fight with him, I told him maybe I can take on d2, but... I think you should keep the dark square bishop. The deck should keep the dark square bishop. Yeah, I mean, this is actually really, really interesting. Like, I, I think you're correct. I mean, but, but I, th I told you that I'm not so terrified about, about uh, giving it and going c5. I mean, okay, computers say taking and going c5 is indeed in white's favor. He, he likes it for white. Bishop e7, he says, tiny and clear, and he actually says just take on a4, which we spoke because I want to open there. I want access to b2. I want access to the pawns over there. Actually, he says that maybe he sa computer says best way to play here is this. And then at some point, I guess eliminating and jumping in like that, because the thing is that there is no bishop e7 here. Because take, take, take the queen, take the bishop. Julian is dissatisfied with the line. Yes? What if you played um, from the original uh, arrangement? What if you played nine, uh, knight to e6? Right now? Yes. Pawn will take it? Pawn will take it, then you move the queen. But e7 is defended many times. Oh, you want to g5? Oh, I'm sorry, no, I, uh, my mistake, yeah. I, I, e7 I, is, this, right. this theme is going to be very important, but not right now. Few, 10 more moves about. So knight to e4, I mean, this move, OK, this move was played. It's very, very, very interesting move. Like, I mean, they're not like in the thing that, you know, someone tells you something kind of stupid, and you say, mm, that's interesting. Like, no, it's not that type of uh, interesting reply. It's actually really interesting, because it's completely blocking this bishop. And allowing white knight access to some squares that black knight was controlling before. I think that's actually really important. Yeah, take, take with the pawn is maybe maybe questionable if this, right? I mean, I'm not 100% certain, but yeah, it looks kind of questionable. It's all, yeah, but, but this, yeah, it's probably just, uh, it's, it's bad. I mean, knight take might even be stronger than pawn take. But also pawn takes. I mean, yeah. No, not, not much to discuss here. So black is pretty much going to take this way. And now it's all about the dark squares. Now, for example, the idea, some ideas with knight e6 and queen going to e7 will be possible. Not now, but they are out there. OK, he, he, for example, I, I really want to play bishop e7. I want to. And if I can play rook h8 and defend everything, I think white is not, not having much. The problem is this move. And now white has two really, really serious threats, like really serious threats. What are white's serious threats? By the way, one, 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 one comment before. Jonathan was telling me, just take the pawn like this. No, this bishop takes d5 is actually, you know, it started like, no, really? Uh, OK, it's interesting. OK, it's genius. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, 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 no, it's actually, it's an amazing move. Like, I mean, I mean, OK, a take b5 we spoke about. Well, it's better. I mean, black can never really dream about giving I will take probably this and like, okay, you get the pawn, but like, what, what are all those weaknesses here? Black will pay for those weaknesses. And if not, almost impossible to touch the pawn on b5. No, this is amazing. But that was a bad, little bit better than 92. So, and we were at this moment. And now, white has two 
serious threats. What are they? Yep. Knight G takes, now it's time to do E6. Now knight G takes E6. Because even if the queen take, the, the knight is taking with another check, right? I mean, because I don't care that the queens are uh, under attack. I mean, one queen is under attack, the other. But we take with another check. So this is one strong threat. OK, what, what is the other? OK, I, I, I will play this move. Yeah, exactly. And, and the problem is that f7 remains undefended. Well, what do I mean by that? After rook h8, this is the problem. That's the big problem. So after take, take this. No, I mean, OK, this, this is non-survivable position here, here. How to win here? OK, maybe just this. OK, let's do our basic checkmate patterns, right? I want to go here. You play f6 or something, or f5, I don't know. I'll take on passa. Pretty much that's it, right? Here, here. Here, here. Yeah. So there, there, there are some serious, black is Missing maybe one move. If black has two moves here, rook e8, rook h8, probably black is really OK. Actually, probably white is toast, because then, <coughs> then really not easy to continue there. But apparently, not so easy to play two moves in a row. Well, you can try, but not easy. OK, so this was played. Yeah, take, but still, take on b5. You know, at the end of the day, the, the pawn, the material is not bad. Knight f4. All oh, right, some stuff over there. And now, actually, interesting moment. What to play here? Yeah, or oh, take on b5 is possible. Maybe, maybe something like that also to consider. Be be because black might be a tiny bit stuck. I mean, you want, you want to basically keep his queen on the queen side busy doing whatever stuff, but just not be able to f go to the king side. Now queen a6, but then you might go with g4 or things like that. Just, just this idea. I mean, it's not easy for black to have a continuation here. Let's think about it. This rook cannot really move. The rook on h8 cannot really move. So yeah, it looks like c4, b4 really scary, but wh how can those be pushed at all? Not so clear. But, all right, g4, maybe tiny bit pushing. Tiny bit pushing. Maybe tiny bit too much. But OK. Yeah, and actually here was interesting. You know, we analyzed today. And remember which move I suggested you, Jonathan? Queen takes d4. You know, I mean, uh, when I was young, I had, a, I, had a big, big, I had big honor to be doing tiny bit chess with Coach Noy. And, I, not so much. I wouldn't say that like few weeks change my chess perspective, but that that way of thinking in general that Coach Noy has been maybe most known. I take everything unless I can be proven that I cannot take the pawn. I mean that's that's basically his philosophy. So sometimes you know I just seen an amazing game that none Coach Noy and Coach Noy really took a pawn that like wow wow you don't take this pawn and actually he missed an amazing move by none. And then in the book says exactly this thing. Coach Noy, def he won so many games, you know, was as close as humanly possible to become world champion with 
those things. So, you know, we with the small one, I take this pawn. And I know when you play this move, I say, <gasps> but then, okay, well, this pawn I'm taking not, not to take the pawn. Actually, it's just the only way I don't want to lose my queen. And after take, now tiny bit better move than what we were looking. Queen f5, queen c2, on the way to f5, and black has just many, 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 many pawns. Yeah. So, take the pawn on d4, but take the pawn on d4, it's not easy. But, you know, that, that's the thing, that sometimes you have to, if you want to defend, you have to defend bravely. I mean, if people go defending and then they just go underground, like, only like this, no. I mean, the great ones, you, know, you defend like this and then you sometimes attack when you need. Yeah, take on d4 is first move to think about. But black took, but on g4. All right, take back. So, so what is white's immediate threat here? White's immediate threat in this position is? Ta -dum, ta -dum. Se seven. Knight take f7, right? You want to play this move? Where should we go? Oh, no. Um, no, I'm, I'm, never mind. <laughs> but, but this is the threat. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm not actually certain that there is more than a draw here. Well, there should be somehow. Here, here. Somehow, some crazy stuff. Hmm. Not so certain if there, if there is actually more than a draw here. <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, the, the bishop is there. Plus, plus the queen is defended. Yeah, the reason why I don't see more than a draw is because there isn't more than a draw. Okay, that's a start. <laughs> yeah, computer suggesting some lines with bishop takes d2. But okay, knight f8 was played. I mean, I think take and b4 might be a possibility here. Some lines, complicated ones. We will keep it tiny. Reasonably simple. Okay. So what about this one? Oh, I denied the fate. Now, interesting, Jonathan. Computer, I just, just left him there a bit. He's saying this, this, and big advantage for white. You just need to open another front. I mean, it's very logical. You're playing all here, your opponent is all defended like there. But now it's, he has some difficulties when you will be threatening at some point in the future, rook a7. It's just another front that is going to be bothering him. Like h4, h5 might be an idea here. And combine the h4, h5 with rook on a7 so the queen has no freedom. No, this? Okay, it's really complicated, but kind of Looks really dangerous. King h1 I can understand, but it's probably not a very good move. I can understand it, but probably not a very good move. Okay, now he played very well. I mean, just logically. Took. There you, you told me that was what was scaring you. Took, took. B4. Rook g1. Yeah. And here the Larson Larson defense, right? But we'll see if it is actually working. Actually, you know, you know which move I, I was actually thinking about this move when 
we are looking. Rookie 7 that you suggested is okay. This is one idea. But another move that just might be might be not a bad one is just get the king away from this g7 square. Because wh white has a very, very powerful idea here, sooner or later. Queen f3. I mean, this, this is a huge... I spoke actually today with Grandmaster Feingold, the father of the victim. <laughs> and, and, and he said, no, he said that, he, he, that Spencer just overlooked Queen f3. And if he indeed over... Because here he is okay, more than okay. But if he indeed overlooked Queen f3, yeah, they're not so, not so easy. For example, you know, there are some amazing ideas. Like, I'm thinking like, for example, here. No, okay, now queen f3. If such a move, check, incredible. And if queen c7, who can show me something impressive? Little bit impressive, a lot impressive. I mean, there are probably several possibilities, but... Yeah, very good. But but if I take if rook take h5, but how take take what now? It's right idea, but we have to this way. First take the rook and now double check. This this is an excellent way. Double check and take and. I mean, okay, maybe black doesn't have to take the queen after it, but that's not, not that great. No, there are real serious problems on f7. Actually, maybe, maybe the position is not that clear with rook e7 or without. In the game, c3 was played, which is wrong. But maybe not, still, not yet losing wrong, but wrong. But here came a losing wrong type of move. But already the position probably seems really uncomfortable. White is taking black's main annoying pawn, the pass pawn, and if white rook will invade the seventh rank, it looks kind of over. I think rook e7 is maybe only move here, but it's very bad. I mean, I mean, we thought today that it's just, c3 is just a really bad period. Yeah, just, I mean, because white managed, what we said all the time, white has so, ma so much pressure here. But still, you know, the opponent is defending. But if we can open another front, another path to attack, that's usually when the opponent is collapsing. I mean, that's why, you know, in chess, where do you find this principle? Principle of two weaknesses, right? It's basically saying the opponent can defend one weakness with everything. Not really easy. You, you see it in many military great battles in the world, right? That some armies, even though they had huge material advantage, they still want a diversion because, well, to just to attack in one spot, opponent gets everything. If you attack in two spots, and now white is heading here, here, not very cool. Black actually, black actually kind of didn't see the main idea. Played rook c8 while still defending the pawn, and now Jonathan move. That's it. I mean, just the f7 pawn cannot be defended at all anymore. Just that, that's totally, totally, that's it. Because if rook c7, you, you just take here, right? No, if rook c7, you take, oh, you take here. And if this move, oh, we need something better here. No? Oh, do we have any smart checkmate discovered out there? Because this, this, 
this is not this you don't want this I mean maybe you do like I mean what I mean maybe just this and look 7 po po probably there's there's some things way stronger there's some like yeah I mean I was looking in to see if there is any dis some discover jumping okay yeah computer say knight a knight f e6 in this position previous movies checkmate just didn't want to bother for it I mean something like this and leading to checkmate but we are simple with just this way and defending everything rook coming to c7 that's it yeah so all right take but that's not much of uh, anything right I mean actually here could have finished the game a bit faster knight take is six knight take and yeah we just take and white is already up material and black king is under many checkmate ideas I mean just no defenders around the king and just checkmate pretty much here but okay we are not going to complain too much you won the game and well pretty much fair and square although well check king h6 yeah okay thousand ways to win so we are not going to discuss it too much here here <sighs> check here queen e4 yes and here take the bishop is winning take take check almost check check and check is winning all right but here we we are quite enough with with winning the piece right i mean so we will stop after da, 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 da. this line queen takes b7 and that's quite enough to win so was really really very big game on the dark squares very big game on the dark squares and this bishop takes d5 that at the beginning seriously really put kill the bishop on b7 you know kind of symbolic that we are stopping our game here okay 10 more moves were played mm -hmm.